Hey. What's up, everybody? It's Magic with Racetunes.com, back for another edition of Dr. Miranda Previews. With me, as always, is my co-host, Dr. Miranda. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, I'm officially in my third trimester of this pregnancy now. I feel like it's just dragging on at this point. Um, had our first baby shower in Pennsylvania, so everything's just flying ba- by. But I'm super excited to go back to Keeneland. I think we're going to head out there on Saturday to see this race, so I'm excited. Right. One of the we were talking about is uh, one of several Breeders' Cup winning year in events at Keeneland this weekend. Uh, we're, of course, looking at race 10 on Keeneland Saturday card, October 9th, the grade one seven hundred fifty thousand dollars Keeneland Turf Mile Stakes. This is a Breeders' Cup winning year in for the Turf Mile, which will be held at Del Mar next month. Big field in here, 13 males, Dr. Miranda, including the defending race champion, Ivar. Uh, you also have the Breeders' Cup uh, Turf Mile winner last year, Order of Australia, favored at 7-2. to two. Take us through the field and uh, let us know what you're thinking about picking. All right, guys. So there's so many horses in here. So I've kind of done just a brief synopsis of each of them, or we'd be here all night. So we're going to start off with the number one, front run the Fed. We last saw this horse at Kentucky Downs where he didn't even hit the board once again. That was a G3 race. This is a G1. So I think that they're doing him no favors, like putting him in the spot, because I think this field is even more loaded in the Kentucky Downs turf sprint. He also hasn't won since 2019. He was claimed from Chad Brown this summer to Karamari. So I just don't expect much from this horse once again. We go with the number two, Argentello. He was at Kentucky Downs last month in the Mint Million and got fourth behind three of the same horses that are in this exact same race. He has only won one race since being in the United States, and that was an optional claimer at Fairgrounds in March. His buyer speed figures have gone down consistently since last December. I'm not looking at him at all. I don't think he's going to pull an upset. We then go on to the number three in love. So this horse intrigues me just a little bit. He ran huge at the TVG Stakes at Kentucky Downs, running a career best buyer of 99 and upset the field. Now, the field wasn't the deepest, but he has been trending upwards, and that's something I like to see. He has a win on this exact turf last October, so that has some upside in it as well. He is two for two at this distance, and he's only raced five times, and as a five-year-old, so it's not like he's a tired horse. I also like how he stalks the pace because you're going to have a lot of front runners here, and then you're going to have a lot of people trying to come from the clouds. We then go on to the number four, Space Traveler. This is his third straight start here in the United States. His first start in the U.S., I usually put an X through those races because I personally do not like when horses are being shipped in from Europe. Um, Their first time's a little wonky, especially when they only have a two-week layoff. Now, his second effort was much better, and he finished with a 99 buyer in the G1 Woodbine Mile. Right behind him was Raging Bull. I think everybody knows who that is. Before coming to the U.S., though, he had won a great uh, Group 2 in Ireland. So he likes to come from the clouds, so it's going to depend how far they let these speedsters get ahead of them. Now, we're going to move on to the number five, Tell Your Daddy. Now, he just recently won the Bernard Baruch and had an impressive buyer of 101. But at the same time, I don't know how strong of a field that was. There's only three other horses in there. And and none of them have really gone on to do a whole lot. Before that, there's not a whole lot that I like in his resume. Every time he's been against these big name horses, he hasn't done well. He has to have the lead to win a race. But I think it's going to be tough with some of these other horses. We go on to number six, Ivar. He only ran once this year, and that was in the Turf Classic against horses like Colonel Liam and Domestic Spanning, um, who are some of the best turf horses. He got six in that race, but horses ahead of him have come back and won some grade ones. He has a win at this track with the Shadwell Turf Mile last year, but he was in his prime um, r- back then. He was running four races in a row over 100 buyer. I really don't think after five months off, he's going to be in that form again. I think he's going to come out running, but I just don't see this race coming out well for him because there's a lot of other contenders in here that are very well conditioned at this point. Then we're going to go to number seven, Pixelate, who just won the Mint Million against a few of these horses in here, got his career best buyer, so he is trending in the right way. But looking at the races from the past year besides that one, he was kind of running okay. Um... He was running at Colonial Downs. He's running at Pimlico. And the last time he won a great stakes was the Del Mar Derby last September. So in my mind, I almost think that race was a fluke for him because Kentucky Downs is so funky. I don't think a lot of the horses really take to that turf. But something to keep in mind, he has hit the try in 16 of his 20 races. So that could be interesting for some of these exotics. 
Then with the number eight, we have Brown Storm, came over here in 2019 and has still not won a race stateside. He did come out swinging in the TVG stakes and led the pack up until the end. Um, but he's going to have a lot more pressure with this race when you have some like a hot brown and tell your daddy. I just don't see this being his race at all. The number nine is Monarch's Glen. The seven-year-old has won a couple ungraded stakes race races recently, but nothing that really makes me look at him too hard. He did finish behind Pixelate and some like at Hot Brown in the Mint Million, but there's even better competition than that race. Um, and looking at his buyers, there's just nothing really that sticks out to me with this horse. Then we go on to the number 10, Order of Australia. Coming back from Europe to defend his win in the Breeders' Cup Mile at the same track, he ran a 105 buyer on the turf in Kentucky last November. I expect him to have a big effort again. He most recently got a 120 time form in the Longchamp G1 last month. So he's better than ever. Aiden O'Brien this year has won with three of his seven horses so far. I think that this horse is the class of the field. And I love these European horses coming over here in these big turf races when they're in their great form. Especially when he doesn't really seem to have any issues shipping in when he shipped in here last year. He shipped in um, Hong Kong. He, I just think, is the class of the field. We're going to go on to number 11, Diamond Oops. This is one of my favorites. Everybody knows that. I picked him in Kentucky Downs last time out. He ended up getting second right behind a Magic Skier jockey. But they just let that horse run around the track with not a whole lot of pressure. He was gaining last time out. and He just kind of ran out of room. So with the distance being longer, I think this fits him a lot better, especially when they could have ran him on the dirt to defend his title, but they're sticking to the turf, which even makes me more intrigued, especially when he's getting overlooked at at 15 to 1. Then we have the number 12 field pass. This horse got eighth in the four-star Dave, and he did win a G3 in July, but there wasn't a whole lot of talent in there. I really just don't like this horse. He never tends to show up in these bigger races, and I think he honestly needs a class relief in order to get a win. Then we go on to the number 13, Some Like It Hot Brown. This is another horse that I really like. He is the early speed, but once again, he has to have the lead in order to win. But he's going to have pressure from the 5 and 8, so he's not going to be up there alone. But if the deep closers let him get far enough away, he can go gate to wire. He did get second to pixelate last time out, but that pace was ridiculous in there. He tired out and he let the closer come up and win. He is on the outside, which kind of makes me a little wary about him, but I still think he's going to be up there in the mix. So with my top pick, I'm going with the number 10 Order of Australia. I think that this horse is just better than the rest of the field. In an exacta box, I'm going to throw in my two favorite boys, Diamond Oops and Some Like It Hot Brown. So it's going to be a 10, 11, 13 exacta box, a trifecta box. I'm going to go for a little bit of a price and throw in In Love. So it's going to be a 3, 10, 11, 13 and lastly, I'm going to do a super box since there's so many horses. I'm going to add in Space Traveler. So this will be 3, 4, 10, 11, and 13. Big field, big purse, big implications for the Breeders' Cup in the Keeneland Turf Mile this weekend. Head over to racingnews.com. The full inside track to the Keeneland Turf Mile wagering guide is available for sale. You can check that out. Over at racingnews.com, we also have previews for every single Breeders' Cup winning you're in happening around the country this weekend. Dr. Miranda. Let the folks know at home where they can follow you for all your tips and insight and any photos or tweets you might send <laughs> trackside uh, when you go visit this weekend. At Miranda Bungie. Good luck to everybody who's playing this weekend. We'll see you over at racingnews.com and we'll see you back here next time.